Hey book nerds, welcome to my channel. So, fun fact, I have not done a book haul since May of last year. An uh, ebook haul that is, so that is a very long time. And I realised that I've bought a lot of ebooks and I need to catch you up with all of them. So I'm actually going to do two haul videos, this is the first one, and this is June of last year until December of last year, so June to December 2019. There is 56 books that I have bought in that time, uh, ebooks, and I'm going to go through all of them. I'm just going to give a one sentence description for each of them because there is so many. The second video will be up at some point and that'll be all the ones from January 2020 to June 2020, which is when it is now. And then I will be up to date again. But yes, yeah, so I'm just going <laughs> to go straight into it, no faffing around, one sentence descriptions, let's go. So we have The Last by Hannah Jameson. This is a post-apocalyptic thriller, um, so it's the end of the world and it is set in a hotel. I think people start getting murdered in this hotel. We have The Six by Annie Taylor. This is a thriller about a woman with a gambling addiction. She gets sent to a monastery for a recovery program, but while she's there she will face certain challenges. I don't know if these are ominous challenges or just like actual challenges of recovery. But yeah, we have Monsters by Emerald Fennel. I actually read this one. This is like a thriller um, or it's a story about two psychotic children who um, they're very young children and they meet each other and they're both interested in murder. And the book kind of goes from there. I guess you'd call it a thriller slash dark contemporary sort of story. We have I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman. Uh, this is about a guy in a band and his fan. Um, if it's Alice Oseman, I'm assuming there's some queer stuff in it, but I don't actually remember if there is or not. I love all Alice Oseman's books. I definitely want to read this one soon. The Dollhouse by Anya Allen. This is a horror book about a person who kidnaps girls and keeps them in a life-sized dollhouse. It's got a really creepy cover um, and sounds very promising. We have Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody. This is a fantasy book, young adult fantasy about a girl whose mother is missing and she goes to a city of sin to find her. We have Think of a Number by John Burdon. This is a thriller and it's about a, there's a serial killer and a police inspecting, investigating the serial killer. And there's something to do with like the whole Think of a Number thing and he, the opening of the envelope and there's a number inside. I think it's implied that this serial killer can read the minds of his victims somehow. Um, it's a bit vague really from the blurb, but that's what I got from it. We have Birthday by Meredith Russo. This is a contemporary about two people who meet every year on their birthday. Pretty sure it's got a trans character. I know this author has got some questionable content now or has done some questionable things, which I won't go into detail here. Um, but I bought this before I knew that and I've heard it's still a really good book about trans people, so I would like to read it. We have Kill River and Kill River 2. Uh, these are both horror books about, they're like slashers, um, I've read both of them, they're set in a water park and it's literally like a serial killer in a water park. They were really good, a bit slow paced for my tastes, um, particularly the first one suffered more so than the second one. The pacing, like the slasher stuff doesn't start till halfway through, but apart from that I really loved them, they're a very good series. And the third one has just come out, so I will definitely be getting that, I've already bought it, I will definitely be reading it soon. We have Sleep by C.L. Taylor. This is a thriller. I've also already read this one. This is about a woman who survives a car crash and is traumatised, so she goes to this island in, in the middle of nowhere to work at a hotel and there's a storm and thriller things are happening at this hotel. It's really creepy, really well written, definitely recommend it. We have The Complete Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. This I bought because it was like ATP um, and I want to get into more murder mysteries that aren't Agatha Christie. I've still not read any of them, but I bought it. We have We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. Shriver? Shriver? Um, I don't actually know, this is quite a famous book. I think it's about the parents of a school shooter, but I could be completely wrong. I know it's something about like parents being afraid of their son and that's kind of all I know about it. We have Twisted by Steve Kavanagh. Not yet read 13, but this is a thriller. I'm just going to read the blurb. It says, before you read this book, I want you to know three things. One, the police are looking to charge me with murder. Two, no one knows who I am or how I did it. Three, if you think you found me, you might be next. Um, yeah, I think it's like a self-aware kind of 
thriller, something about writing a story and reading the story. I don't really know. Um, I got it on offer. We have The Birthday Girl by Sue Fortin. This is about a woman who has a birthday party and a secret gets revealed. This could be a thriller, but the other book by this author was sold as a thriller and it wasn't. It was more like a domestic drama. So this could be more of the same thing, but it still sounded good. So I thought I'd give it a shot in case it's more thrillery. A Perfect Roommate by Ninka Kent. This is a thriller about roommates, and that's all I know. One Spun a Rainbow, Volume 1, by a whole bunch of authors. Um, I thought this was a anthology about queer fairy stories, and it is, but it's also an anthology about queer erotic fairy stories, which, um, yeah, <laughs> wasn't my thing. Um, I thought it was interesting, but it was just, it was too much erotica for me. I was hoping for something different. We have The Taking of Annie Thorne by C.J. C. Yeah, C.J. Tudor. Um, this is about a girl called Annie who vanishes and she comes back and she is not as she was. Um, I think it's like a thriller, maybe some horror elements in there as well. Light as a Feather by Zoe Arson. This is about a um, group of teenagers play a horror game, which I think is like Light as a Feather, Stuff as a Board, and somehow the game ends up predicting deaths that actually happen. And it is described as Final Destination meets Riverdale, which is a combination I am excited about. We have Tales from the Lake, Volume 2. I also have Volume 1, not read either of them yet, but this is like a horror short story anthology collection. We have The Night Before by Wendy Walker. This is a thriller about a woman whose sister vanishes on a date and it's told before she went on the date and after she went on the date, kind of in parallel. We have The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is about two people who share a, this is a romance, a very famous romance, and these two people share a flat, specifically they share a bed, one of them works in the evenings and one of them works in the day, and they start for romance, and it sounds really, really good. I've heard nothing but good things about this. We have What's Your Type by Merv A. Emre. That's definitely not how you say that. Merv Emre, I assume. Um, this is about the Maya Briggs personality test. This is a non-fiction book, and that test has like a really weird origin story. I've heard bits about it. We never actually covered it on my degree, but um, some friends have told me stuff about it and I think it sounds like an interesting story behind the test and I'd like to learn more about it. I have Awakenhurst by Michelle Paver. Michelle Paver was one of my favourite authors as a child and I read her book Thin Air, which was a horror and I loved it. And this is like a gothic horror. Um, I think it's set in a house, that's all I really know about it, but I bought it for the author. We have Under the Wig um, by William Clegg QC. This is the memoirs of a judge. So it's basically like all those doctor books, but with a judge instead. We have A Thousand Doors by J.T. Ellison. This sounds really cool, actually. This is a short story collection, and each short story is a different um, parallel life of this one character. So they're all about the same character, just living different lives. I think that's a really cool concept for an anthology. I'm quite excited to read this. We have The Escape Room by Megan Golden. This is a thriller about a group of Wall Street workers who get go to an escape room and secrets get revealed and thrillery things happen. I love books about escape rooms and I'm quite into quite a few of them at the moment, so I need to actually read them. We have Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark by Alvin Schwartz. I actually bought all of these. Um, it was like one collection. It was on sale. Um, I read them all. They are good. They are kids' stories, so unlike um, say, the Point Horror books. These don't have much appeal for adults, but I think if you're a kid you'd really enjoy them. And it was still nice to kind of experience something that's such like a cultural icon to so many people. We have A No One's Home by D.M. Pulley. This is a story about a haunted house and a couple who move into a haunted house. So I think it's like a horror type thing. We have What If by Randall Munro. So this is by the author of X... XKCD, which is why it caught my eye. It's a non-fiction book and it's basically scientific answers to really, really stupid hypothetical questions, which sounds like a lot of fun. We have Genes versus Cultures versus Consciousness by Andres Campero. This is a non-fiction book about exactly what the title says. Um, I think I must have got this for free. I think maybe it was one of the prime books of the month or something. Um, because I don't really know why else I would have picked it up. But I think it sounds interesting. It's about like the interaction of brains and the things that make up parts of the brain. So obviously it's it's a bit relevant to me as a psychologist. We have The Crime of the Century by Dennis Elbrio and William J. Martin. This is a non-fiction book. It's a true crime book about um, 
this crime I only heard about, <laughs> American Horror Story. I think it's quite famous in America, but I'd never heard of it. It's about these five, five nurses, I think. Maybe more than five, actually. There's like eight on the cover. Um, but these women got murdered, basically. They were all in one house and they got murdered. And I know almost nothing about the crime apart from what American Horror Story showed me. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to learn more. We have A Gristle and Bone by Duncan Ralston. Again, this is a horror short story anthology collection. Stuff Matters by Mark Myodonik. Um, this is a non-fiction book about the things that things are made out of. <laughs> Again, probably not really sure why I picked this up because I probably won't read it for a while, but I was on a non-fiction non book buying spree and it just seemed interesting at the time. We have MJ Arledge, A Gift for Dying. And this isn't part of her um, main detective series, but I have read her main detective series and I really like it, so I love her writing. This is about a detective who can seem to predict people's deaths, like how they're going to die by looking into their eyes. So it's a thriller, maybe with some new supernatural elements. I don't know whether she can definitely predict from looking into their eyes or if it's like a rumour thing. But yeah, I love this author's writing, so I'm sure I'll love this when I get round to it. Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Um, this is a science fiction book about a group of people travelling through space, various um, species and genders and stuff. This is probably the best science fiction book I'll ever read and <laughs> if I was gonna love science fiction I would love this book. Um, I'm talking straight science fiction here, not like science fiction thriller, but alas I do not love science fiction so this is a really great book. If you do like science fiction, you should definitely check it out. But for me, it was just kind of okay. The good side of okay. We have Matilda by Roald Dahl. I actually bought this because I bought it for the Scooby Doo a thon um, and I was going to reread it and I didn't get around to it, but I would like to reread it at some point. It was one of my favourite uh, childhood books. We have Drowning with Others by Linda Kia. Kia. This is a thriller about a couple, a couple who seem perfect to everyone but they may have potentially killed someone, and that is the premise. Two very similar books now. We have Eat, Shop, Save by Dale Pinnock, and Eat Well for Less by uh, Joe Scar Scarlett Jones, I think is the author. Um, bought both of these because they are were really cheap recipe books. I got them, I think, for 99p each, and I'm really a fan of... Um, that kind of recipe so it's like healthy but it's designed for low budgets and ease of cooking and that's like the main features of it. We have The Reunion by Guillaume Musso. Um, this is a thriller it's just set in the past and the present and it's about a student who ran away with a teacher. I th there's a body involved and I don't know if the student and the teacher buried it or if someone else buried it and then there is a school reunion which is the present plot um, of presumably the people who attended the school. I have another short story horror collection with Night Asylum by Douglas Clegg. We have Behave by Robert Sapolsky. Um, this is a non-fiction book about human behaviour and the various factors and biology that make up behaviour. We have Doctor Sleep by Stephen King. This is the sequel to The Shining. It's about the kid main character of The Shining. I want to reread The Shining before I read this. Um, <laughs> I'm not a massive fan of The Shining but eventually I will reread it and then I'll read this. We have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is about, this is a young adult thriller about a girl investigating a murder. We have Love's Executioner and Other Tales of Psychotherapy by Irvin D. Yellum. Um, this is a non-fiction book and it is a psychotherapist talking about 10 of his patients and case studies. I think that sounds really interesting. Um, it's obviously non-fiction. We have Merry Bloody Christmas by Ellie Scott. This is an anthology. I don't actually think it's a horror. I think they are contemporary, dark, humorous Christmas stories. I bought this to read in December and never got round to it, so I'll probably read it next Christmas. Next we have Hydra and Changeling, both by Matt Wesselowski. Um, these are the sequels to Six Stories, so they are both got the same premise of it is um, a guy running the podcast and he talks to... He focuses on one case and he talks to six people involved with the case and kind of presents the evidence um, without intending to solve the case. The first one is about a girl who, uh, well, the second book, I mean Hydra. <laughs> Hydra is about a girl who um, has been accused of murdering her whole family and she's in prison. 
And then this one is about a missing child. Um, I've just started listening to the audiobook of the Hydra and I really, really like it. We have Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. Again, I bought this to read in December. This is the Christmas Discworld book about, I think, the Hogfather's their version of Santa. Never got around to it. We'll read it next December. We have The Dark Game by Jonathan Jantz. This is a thriller about 10 authors who are on a retreat and someone starts psychologically messing with them while they're on this retreat. Poison Orchids by Sarah, uh, Sarah A. Denzel and Annie Taylor. This is a thriller about two girls who were kidnapped by this creepy guy and kind of kept imprisoned by him. And they've both just been rescued and they're telling their stories to the police separately, but their stories don't add up and it's like there's something going on there. The American Gods Quartet by Neil Gaiman. Um, this is a, well, I think they're all fantasy books. These are the books that are in it. I bought it because I want to read American Gods, which I know is a story about gods living on the earth in the present day, I believe. Um, I'm not really sure what the other ones are about, but it was like the Kindle Daily deal to get all of them. So I do have another Douglas Clegg book, Coming of Age. This is three short horror novellas. Slay by Brittany Morris. Uh, this is about a girl who develops an online RPG card game. The game gets accused of being dangerous and she's got to defend it and I think she's at risk of being doxxed. Um, yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about this book as well. We have I Choose You by Gail Curtis. Um, this is a thriller. <laughs> it says it's, a, it's about a couple and both of their mums were killed by a killer and then their daughter gets taken and they think it could be the same killer coming back for revenge. The final book is Disco Death Trap by Cameron Rubigu. This is, I already read this one. Uh, this is a slasher set on New Year's Eve in the 80s and it's set at Roller Disco. It's basically a bunch of teenagers go to this roller disco to spend New Year's Eve and then a slasher killer starts picking them off. This, I actually like this way more than Kill River. Like the Kill River books are really good. This one was paced really well, had a really satisfying ending, a lot of good horror that was spaced out and yeah I really enjoyed reading it a lot. So yes those are all the books I'm hauling for this first part, like I said there will be a second part. If you have any questions about any of them I'm happy to elaborate more, I just didn't want this to be the longest video in the world ever. Um, let me know if you've read any of these, if you want me to move them to my like to the top of my priority list I will do my best to do so if, if you recommend them to me. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please give me a thumbs up, it helps me massively and I hope to see you next time.